Hey guys, how are you? A quick vlog. Is DevOps the new J2EE? So, just in case you don't know what J2EE is, J2EE is Java 2 Enterprise Edition. This was one of the biggest kludges in uh, software development history, in my opinion, back in the 1990s where Java rose and it started off as a simple language and then it quickly became this uber complex language and it just became silly. And the silliest part of Java was Java 2 Enterprise Edition. They had all these crazy architectures and frameworks and protocols for development that it was just a nightmare. It was just a nightmare. Now, I'll just mention one specification in the Java world at that time, something called EGB or EJB, excuse me, Enterprise Java Beans. Now, Enterprise Java Beans, um, you know what, I'm not going to get into details what it was, but it was just a way to organize your app, if you will, and to share information. There's different types of Java beans. So they came up with specification number one, EJB1, and it crashed and burned because it was so complex because it was developed by about 50 ivory tower nerds. Basically, you had Microsoft and you had... Um, Sun Microsystems, the people who invented Java, you had Oracle, and you have you know, a whole bunch of companies involved, IBM, and they got together all these nerds, and they came up with this crazy specification. Specifications by committee always end up being a disaster, by the way. It's just a, a truism of a life. So they came up with EJB1, they deployed it to the uh, marketplace, and then uh, companies like Web Object, that was web, not Web Objects, Web Logic. Anyway, so a bunch of companies came out with their tools to support EJB1. It was such a kludge and a mess, it just crashed and burned. The community said, no, this is terrible, this stuff sucks. So then they came up with EJB2, which was a totally different specification. I mean, it was, well, very, very different. It's been a long time, so it was very different. So I remember, I cracked open this, I bought this book on EJB2. It was, it was literally this thick. I remember this Rocks books, W-R-O-X. Uh, they were a big tech publisher back in the 90s. They have since gone bankrupt as far as I understand. Yes, they have. Anyway, so they came with this huge, it's, it's EJB2 it was like a dis another disaster. Another disaster. Whew. You had Session Beans, if I recall, and then you had State. Anyway, it was just, it was a big mess. Again, another design by committee, by Ivory Tower Nerd Committee system, and it just became super complex and it got in the way of things. So what happened is a new version of EJB came out, but it was a version that was developed by the community. The Java community started rebelling. The actual programmers actually had to use these tools in real, real world development. They said, this stuff, this stuff is terrible. So they came up with their own stuff and eventually the committee you know, was dragged into accepting the uh, community developed specifications, if you will, and it became a much more usable uh, environment. Java Enterprise became much more usable. Not to say it's light and nimble by any means, it's still complex. Uh, something called Java Spring, which is the predominant framework now, came out of that. Uh, this guy, Rod Johnson, wrote this book back in the day, and this book was basically uh, a criticism of modern Java technology. The, 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 uh, the official way of doing things was just no good. So he came out with this book and he sort of introduced his new way of thinking about writing Java code and the code and the frameworks that he first introduced in this book became the nucleus, if you will, the starting point for what became this Java Spring framework. Now, I'm not saying you should run out and learn Spring. No, by any means, I wouldn't say that. The point is, is that a lot of times you see... Uh, in the software community, you see specifications rise or uh, best practices, uh, you know, in terms of what the community, the, com the programmer community expects you to do. These, ide these, these ideas rise and everybody says, oh, that's the way you do it. That's the way you do it. So now I'm going to take my shot on version control, version control. Now, DevOps. Specifically, I find that uh, DevOps, um, it evolved over the years, and the biggest, I think that DevOps today, using Git and, uh, and, and these repos and stuff, I think it, it is unnecessarily complex 
most of the time. I think it's the new J2 double E. It's very powerful, it's very useful, but there's a tremendous learning hurdle, especially people new to uh, software development. And there's a lot of capability in there that many, 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 many projects just don't require. They're not, it doesn't, you don't need an 18 wheel semi if you just got to deliver a couple of chairs, right? And I think that uh, modern day DevOps is extremely complex. It's silly complex. And for many software development projects where you just need to collab with one or two other developers and then have, need uh, the ability to be able to roll back code and to uh, control, you know, have a basic version control. I think that's, you know, that's what you need. Uh, and GitHub certainly does that, but it, it, you know, modern DevOps, and I'm not just picking on GitHub, it's just begotten, it's just become too complex, I think. And uh, so now, um, I just saw a podcast with this guy, Joel Spolsky. He's the guy who invented Stack Overflow. He was a very influential writer back in the 90s. He worked for Microsoft and uh, in his day. And uh, he, again, he was a co-founder of Stack Overflow. And he, he was also the, the inventor of Trello, which is a very successful app. And uh, now he's working on that problem. He's, he's come out and talked about that, how, uh, how DevOps has become stupidly uh, complex for no good reason for most use cases. So he's coming out with a, project, a product now. I haven't looked at it, I don't know how good it is. Uh, in response to that, now he's a guy who uh, has a tremendous amount of experience, tremendously successful multiple times. When you're looking at entrepreneurs or you're looking at developers, you're looking at anybody, in any given field, look to the people who have successes multiple times, not just once, multiple times. Then you know somebody is really good. It's like fighters. If you win one fight, but if you're able to win many, many fights against many different opponents, maybe you've won a couple of championships, that really shows you're really good. Same thing in business. One of my most influential mentors, he had tremendous success in many businesses, not just one big hit. He had many businesses and different types of businesses. Very rare, very rare. So uh, when Joel speaks about these type of things, I, take, uh, I pay attention to that because, again, he's had tremendous successes in many uh, in different things. Stack Overflow being the most, and Trello being the two big ones, but he's had others as well. So when he, uh, I was happy to hear that he's identified what I've been uh, moaning about myself in terms of the uh, over complexity of DevOps these days. I'm not saying DevOps, DevOps is crap and you should ban the DevOps. No, I'm just saying that it's become, I believe for many, many projects, if not the majority of software development out there, it's become overly complex. So you have people learning to want to learn how to code and you go to these boot camps and the first thing they do is say, you got to learn DevOps. And they're like, oh man, what a, what a mess. <laughs> a lot of people just stop because of DevOps. And it's just, it's j 2 E. It's unnecessarily complex. That's why I teach my foundations first. I teach you how to build real things first. And then I say, then you'll be ready to explore basic DevOps like Git, GitHub, and etc. But I think that uh, I'm gonna, I'll be following up on this. I want to see what this guy is doing with, in terms of his version of DevOps. And, um, and he was talking about this in a recent podcast. He was modeling it after kind of like uh, Google Docs where you can all share a spreadsheet or you could all share a document, like a Word document, a Google document. And you can have multiple users using it, commenting on it. You can, re you can load previous versions and it's really easy to do. Does it have the power of modern DevOps? Does it have all the capabilities? No, but for a lot of projects, it's really, really good. So he's modeling his product. And again, I'll come back to you guys when I learn more about it off of that basic Google Docs model. And I think that's kind of cool because I think that modern day web op, DevOps has become the new J2EE. Doesn't mean it's all bad, but it means that you don't need an 18 wheel semi if you're just moving two chairs. You don't need ultra complex, ultra powerful DevOps when most of the software being written out there doesn't need that. So uh, there again, one of my um, 
somewhat controversial positions, I suppose, just like when I said Ruby was going to go down, um, amongst other uh, commentaries. But yeah, DevOps is the new J2EE, and my, my, uh, and my, uh, my feeling is overly complex for no good reason for most projects. I'm not saying it sucks. I'm not saying you, shouldn't, you should version control. There should be ability to control, uh, you know, just how code is written and so forth. So you can, you know, so that you can, uh, you know, if you, you deploy a bad code, you can reverse that and all this kind of stuff. But it's just gotten a little bit silly now. So I think, uh, I think uh, there's room for simplification there in a big way. So if you're trying to learn how to code and you've looked at DevOps, you're going, oh man, this is complex. Yes, it is. It's overly complex. You are correct, sir and ma'am. So it will should be and it will be fixed i would imagine hopefully over the next year or two simplification is always good when it comes to anything especially software development all right that's it for now bye